Let's start off by drawing a circle of radius 1. We will pick a point on the circumference of the circle and we'll call it x0, y0. We will draw the radius to that point. Now pick another point on the circumference and draw the radius and we'll call that point x1, y1. We will drop the perpendicular from x0, y0 to the x-axis and drop the perpendicular from x1, y1 to the x-axis. We will draw in the angle phi from the x-axis to the point x0, y0 and we'll draw in the angle theta which is the angle from the point x0, y0 to x1, y1 and also the radius is given by the distance r. Now let's find the lengths x0 y0 and x1, y1. We can see from simple trigonometry that cos of the angle phi is given by x0 upon r. So here's the angle phi, this is the length x0 and this is the length r. So the cos of phi is x0 divided by r. So we can say x0 is equal to r cos phi. So that's this length here. We can also say that the sine of the angle phi is given by y0 divided by r. So therefore we can say that y0 is equal to r sine phi. And that's this height here. So we have two of the lengths that we were looking for. Now we can also say that the length x1 divided by r, which is this length here, divided by r, is equal to the cos of phi plus theta. So that's the cos of the full angle. So therefore we can say that x1 is equal to r cos phi plus theta. So that's this distance here. Also, we can say that y1 divided by the distance r is equal to the sine of the full angle phi plus theta. Therefore, we can say that y1 is equal to r sine phi plus theta. So that's us have our four lengths. We have the length x0, which is r cos phi, the length y0 which is r sine phi. We have the length x1 which is r cos phi plus theta and the length y1 which is r sine phi plus theta. Now let's not get lost in the mathematics here. What we have are three inputs. We have the point x0 and y0 and we have an angle theta which we want to rotate the x0, y0 around. So the inputs are x0, y0 and the angle theta. And the outputs are the new position, which are x1, y1. And we want to come up with an equation that relates the output x1, y1 with the inputs x0, y0 and the angle theta. So we don't really need or want this angle phi in the final equation. We only want the initial point, the final point and the angle which we use to rotate. Now we can relate those inputs to the outputs if we multiply out the r cos phi plus theta. And we do that by using the double angle formula. So cos phi plus theta is the same as cos phi cos theta minus sine phi sine theta. Now if you're unsure of the double angle formula, I have a video in the appendix section at the end of the course in which I derive these, and I also derive them graphically. 
So that means that x1 is equal to r cos phi cos theta minus sine phi sine theta. But note that the r cos phi is nothing other than the length x0, which is this length here. And the value r sine phi is nothing other than the length y0, which is our input height here. So that means that we can write the value x1 is then equal to x0 cos theta minus y0 sine theta. So now we have the relationship we were looking for. We have the output here x1 in terms of the input x0 and y0 and the angle which we use for the rotation, which is the angle theta. And we can do the same for the value of our y1, which is equal to our sine phi plus theta. In this case, the double angle formula gives us our sine phi cos theta plus cos phi sine theta. But you can see here again that the r sine phi is the value of y0 and the r cos phi is the value of x0. So that means that y1 is equal to y0 cos theta plus x0 sine theta. So finally we have what we are looking for, an equation which relates the outputs x1, y1 with the inputs x0, y0 and the rotation angle theta. And this can be written in matrix form x1, y1 is equal to cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta cos theta times x0, y0. So we have the inputs x0, y0, the rotation matrix and the outputs x1, y1. So let's go ahead and we will use this in the graphical calculator.